The last couple of videos I've done have been the three-sided and four-sided vase. The three-sided one was done totally between centres and the four-sided one was done with the Axe Minister uh, eccentric spiralling chuck. I have another piece of wood now on the lathe. I've already trued this up. I have already put this on this, the um, Axe Minister eccentric spiralling chuck and it's been trued up on here and I've also got a tenon on each end. I needed to do it once it was trued up on here to make sure that it's still going to be true when I take it off the chuck. I'm undecided at the moment what precisely I'm going to do, but what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do a five-sided item. If you've got one of these chucks or you watched the last video when I used this, you'll know that the rotational points on this, I've got 12 index points, now five doesn't go into 12. So therefore I'm going to, for the four sides, I'm going to use a rotation of two index places, which will take it up to eight. That leaves me four for the fifth side. So it's going to be a very, very sort of odd shape. And it's more of an experiment to see how this comes out. Uh, last time I, when I did the four sided one, this is the off cut when I part it off it was really difficult to tell how far you're going down because I was constantly having to look at the sides to see how far I'd gone down to try and get them all equal. So while this is all in the trued up position before I put it in the off center mode, I'm going to stick probably three depth gauges. I think what I'm gonna do first of all, with just with a pencil line, is just stick a rough center point. I think I'm going to go about 60 mil each side. So there's not going to be a great deal of difference between the central point and the ends but there is going to be a slight sort of raise in the middle so my next job is to first get this now put in the off center position so let's go possibly to the full extreme again turn the lathe speed right down and bring up my live center for support again so on my index position there I am at my starting point if you didn't watch my previous video on this the way the blank is held to the eccentric spiraling chuck it's very much like a face plate so it's just held in with three screws because it's end grain they're not overly long screws so there is a chance of it being pulled out which is why I will always use my live center just to give it that extra support and I'm just going to use my ordinary spindle gouge so the idea is I want to take that center point down to the size of the bottom there so speed is about a thousand rpm So my depth line is absolutely ideal for the ends. However, my depth line for the middle is probably not such a good idea because it's always going to be cutting into these edges. So I might have to have a change of plan here and now just take this totally flat.
so I'm back to uh, getting ready to sand again the middle depth line is really not a lot of use sanding with the lathe speed at around about 700 just need to try and keep the sandpaper as flat as possible not pushing into the work otherwise it's going to start sanding off the corners the edges rather than the piece that is actually touching as it rotates around so the key to making sure you don't get tool marks on here is when you do those last two or three finishing cuts it really needs to be slowly as you go across the work and fairly light because this is obviously you're, you're cutting air most of the time uh, the tool is actually only sort of touching from there to there so probably two-thirds of this is actually air and if you go too fast what you'll find is that you're you're then dropping the cut out as you go across so as I, as I leave this piece here say like where this center line is by the time I've actually gone all the way around again I'm actually a lot further along the work so that it leaves a big gap of where you're actually cutting so you just really need to make sure you cut along there at a slow rate i've now gone through the grits on this and sanded this to 600. i'm going to now rotate this around release it from the chuck and just remember i just this index point here is where i need to rotate it two places so this holding screw on the back here two rotations does it and then I can then rotate that one two places this time I'm going anti-clockwise so I just got to remember that just nip that up a little bit I can then go back on the chuck I shouldn't need no adjustment with the tool rest because all I've done is actually rotate the work on the chuck itself and now I will be cutting this side here so I'm going to now just turn this bit down and again it's just down to the depth lines at each end with a straight edge so taking the speed up to about a thousand again So I'll just repeat the same process now, get that side sanded up and then carry on with the next two sides where I'll be turning this two index pieces each time. I've now completed four sides on this. So this was the first one and it's nice and wide initially because, well it was originally wider because I've not took anything out of this side. The second one here is just a narrow one there same as the third one has a narrow one there as well i don't know how well these are shown on the camera but the fourth one again is a nice wide one because this side is going to be fairly thin because it's took out from the previous cut whereas this side is all part of this untouched side and you can see on the end here where my live center has been and i've just marked these with a sharpie so the sharp easier so there's the center point when it's all trued up and then I've gone to one, two, three, four so far. So each one of those was two stops on the indexing point. So we started from zero to two, four, six, and I'll get to go all the way round. I would normally do another two more cuts, which would be eight, 10, and then back to zero again. But because I want to do a five-sided object, I need to make the last one over here somewhere. So it's going to be three stops this time. So this time, it's this edge here I'm going to be taking out. I'm going to go down to the depths first of all, 
where hopefully it's enough to take out all of this center line. This is now turned down and I've got a few tool marks in there which hopefully this will sand out. I found that most of them have done pretty well so far. I've just gone down to the depths of the depth guide. So it means that this first one is much wider because it's gone on three steps on the index ring. Because it is much wider and you've not rotated around to take another chunk out of the material lower, it means that the next two, the ones either side of it, are slightly smaller than this one and therefore because that is a proper cut of two stops on this side but it's three on this side it means that then these two are smaller again so we go from large to slightly smaller to a lot smaller so it's different really different type of effect so I'll just get this one sanded up and I'll come back when I've then finished that off and decide what I'm going to do done all the side turnings now and you can see here where if both ends had been between centers precisely where everything would have been just put the whole chuck all back to where it was originally when it started what i've decided to do i'm going to make this probably into some form of like a, a lidded vase so i'm going to part this off at the top here just inside of where i've actually done the shape i can probably then might be able to use this piece then to create some form of a lid hollow out the inside and i might shape the bottom again a bit like in the last project to create a base for it rather than having that straight shape <laughs> I've hollowed out the inside there. I used a 40mm forced a bit just to take it down as far as I could. Um, I've then just used the hollowing tool just to smooth it out a bit. Put a lip in the top here. The inside is hollowed out just above this line, so I'm going to use this line to create some form of a, a stem and a base on here now.
lid has just been turned and it's just a loose fit on there didn't want nothing tight i'm going to finish this off with tongue oil like i did with the previous couple but what i'm going to try first of all is I'm just going to use the chestnut spirit stains this is the english walnut just to do the lid and it's more of an experiment really because i want to see once this is dried what it's what actually happens when i apply tongue oil on it the easiest way i've found of this is just pour a bit of tongue oil in can then use my piece of cloth on some forceps so hopefully you can see now the very distinctive shape on here so there's on the bottom here got one very long wide flat side the two sides next to it are slightly shorter and then the two on the top are much shorter and the reason for that as i probably mentioned is that this spiraling chuck has 12 stop points you can't divide five into 12 and get a whole number therefore your sides are going to have to be different sizes it is possible to obviously create five equal sides if i turn it between centers but not with the chuck but what the chuck has given me is precision so all of those sides are really perfect in their alignment if i'd got that between centers i'd only got to be a slight maybe one or two millimeters off in any direction by putting it between centers and the sides would not come out nowhere near as good as that i thought this time gone for almost like that vase style shape again but i thought the addition of a lid just made it look again something slightly different and also on that i wanted to see what happened when i put tongue oil over coloring so just using the chestnut spirit stains uh, for coloring the lid there put the tongue oil on and i don't think there was even any color run on there so be interesting to hear your thoughts on this one and hopefully it's been of interest to you if you've got one of these chucks uh worthwhile having a play with thanks a lot for watching